Ah, the epic majesty of the A9 has viewed from the hills above Deviate. Have you ever seen a dual carriageway look so beautiful? There it is, sneaking its way towards Inverness, and here I am, one slip road away from where I ought to be. That's because the producer wanted this shot of the landscape and there was no talking him out of it. Anyway, for this first episode of Those Funny Women in the Woods, I should be in a car park half a mile up the road. Oh look, there I am. Cue me. So I'm here at Davey Woods just waiting for my first guest. It is a fine day in November. It's actually looking really nice, to be honest. I don't think my first guest is going to be in uniform, mind you, but she might, I'm not sure. Oh, here she comes now. Thank you for inviting me. Karen Barkey is probably Absolutely. best known as being Officer Karen in the TV comedy Scott Squad, but she is also an award winning radio actor and, as I was to discover, a great companion for Woodland Wandering. Oh, oh okay, Fadrick, been there before. Mm -hmm. Always wanted to go to Lord Hill. Mm -hmm. Claude, also a good one, and this is the one with that. Mm -hmm. It's good because it's like they're all deep in the city. Yeah but they feel like you're in the countryside. Uh, we've never had so much in common with the tea <laughs> in our lives, yes. Oh, so, alright, okay, oh cool. So they, I'm just reading on and it, apparently they cut them down when they get too big, so I'll maybe, <laughs> I'll maybe lay off the cakes. Um, but no, it's, it's an amazing place, it looks fabulous. It is, it's good for just getting away from it all. Yeah. There's no such thing as a dog poo fairy. <laughs> that might not be quite true, might be. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Take on the day there. David Woods, there's quite a few deer that are just everywhere, they're roe deer. Oh wow! Yep. You'll probably hear them before you see them, yeah. or you'll notice on the ground maybe some of their, their business, and that's kind of when you know <laughs> that they're nearby. But I'm not seeing too many out and about at the minute, maybe too bright for them. I don't really know what a roe deer is. Is that just a description of what they look like? or? Roe deer, are, they completely, they, they all just stand in a row, that's, that's why. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Fair enough. Yeah. No, I should have. I should, so it's like the queuing deer. Yeah. It's especially one of these things in the Highlands that people just say and you just pretend like you know <laughs> and you're like, I yeah, totally know what it is. And until you see something that looks remotely like a deer, then you go, that's it. Uh, see, yeah. if you sound confident in what you're saying, then I mean, everybody will believe it. So that's so. my motto going forward. So especially oh. with the trees, I wouldn't be able to tell you what any of these trees are. Oh, Scott's Pine. And I know this because um, one of the shows we used to do was for kids, and that's a Scots pine because they're tall and straight, straight and slender. Ah, okay. Uh, Everything you've taught the and kids. And willow. Teach me. Yeah. So willows are like this. Okay. Scots pines are like this. The mighty oak. There's a, there, yeah. There's some odd things about trees. I'm going to but point <laughs> out what I think is a, a willow and an oak going forward. <laughs> They'll probably be wrong, but it's all right. They had a reason. Fortunately, none of these are too chubby currently so hopefully they're going to survive a bit longer i'm looking out for fat trees now that's exactly what i'm thinking they all look very slim mm -hmm. like these guys have obviously not been to like an all you can eat buffet these trees but <laughs> it's getting there especially that one over there so kind of a bit chunky oh, do you know I, I really want to see a hedgehog i really hope this hedgehog's here i miss hedgehogs so much we used to have them in the city when Aww. i was young and then so, oh hello hello tiny tiny doggy hello. i'm sorry i know you're right <laughs> it's the smallest dogs that have like the most huge <laughs> attitudes yeah. Hi. No, he's, he's... That, I one's, that one's just like my, my brother she's doing he didn't just let him crap on i know but i love him he's so small and he's so determined to take control don't you mess with me I think we'll see amazing. quite a bit of wildlife, dogs included. I mean, <laughs> I think we'll see plenty of them because this is like a fab place for dog walking. But hedgehogs, I mean, you never know.
absolutely knackered. We have been walking for five, possibly even six minutes. That's so, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> go walks like i'll go walk and i don't know to the shops or something around the block but i'll never purpose to say right i'm going on an hour two hour walk i i must admit i'm not i don't often do it either and i wish i did it more because yeah. i always really enjoy it i used to love going um i used to go hill walk with the nature stakes yeah. and uh stuff like that and and i used to work with a company that did a lot of outdoor stuff so we would cite our walks by like going around an entire yeah. estate and figuring out where we were going to do scenes and I genuinely love it, but I'm such a lazy busy in my day to day life mm-hmm. that I never think today's the day. Let's go a big long walk. I wish I should. I, I wish I did though. Mm-hmm. I'd be the kind of person if I did go on a walk, I'd have to leave my phone behind. I'd need to be able to switch off, you know? Yeah. It, I think that's one of the things that's so great about being in the outdoors actually is that sense of peace and that sense of getting away from day to day pressures and getting away from technology and stuff like that it's so easy to just yeah. constantly pick up a phone and doom scroll yeah <laughs> whereas being out in nature i always feel tons better after i've been walking well that's tons. it right now with everything that's going on it's good to just get out and just leave it all behind and enjoy some peace and quiet yeah and i think it also just actually being around nature and being out in the fresh air it's like a real reset for your mm. mind it's not just the getting away from it it actually it actually improves everything about your mood you sleep better everything about it so i should do it more often i need to be a bit cautious though because i've got um i get a bit of what they call hypermobility in my joints not really badly by any manner of means but I, I need to be cautious so yeah. i can't do like really heavy duty walking because i'll get pains in my joint yeah. um but somewhere like this is ideal because it's got nice flat terrain mm. and you can take it at your own pace. You get to see loads of lovely friendly doggies. Hello doggies! And that's like dog number seven. Oh. We've only been here for five minutes. How, how far are we from Inverness right here? Eh, well, Inverness is about two miles in that direction. So we'd probably best get going eh? Just because it is a bit of a, it's a bit of a walk. That's, that, that's something I would normally bus. I'm not going to lie, but I can do it. I I've wish got the gear. There was a bus to offer you, but there's just not, so nope. let's get a move on. Got all the gear, me, I do. I, I, I like to think that just because I'm a townie doesn't mean that I can't do walking. Exactly. I'm kind of amazed though to see, because there's housing pretty much right mm-hmm. straight smack on the end of this lane. So this is Milton Elise, this is the housing development, so this is still part of Inverness, it's just obviously got a bit bigger now and kind say, of spread out. The sprawl's really got, I, I hadn't realised how much it had grown, mm. it's not an area that I know that well, but that's amazing. Yeah, when I first came here I wouldn't think it was a city, but it definitely has got its city stateship now for yeah. sure. Yeah, these guys just have this on their back garden, it's beautiful. I mean, it's a nice, it's a nice place to, mm-hmm. to saunter out into. I imagine not necessarily in the winter. I imagine. Yeah, uh, you are above the snow line here, so <laughs> it will be very winter wonderlandy, which means it'll get a little bit chilly. And I don't know if you're a bit colder now and fancy getting a coffee or anything like that. I mean, I've never seen no a coffee. Great. We just need to walk all the way back. Come on. I'm acting sad, but I'm actually quite good. Coffee at the end. Now don't worry, this isn't the end. I wanted a proper gin wag with Karen, and the producer had promised edible treats. Mm. And because I wanted to talk about secret personal stuff, we took our coffees and cakes outside and we got stuck in. 
you are about to move to London. Yep. Yep, so now's the time to convince me not to if you want to. <laughs> or to convince me to go if you love it, because I know you've been there as well. It's just a bit of a random, right, let's do this, let's put all my heart and soul into something I've always wanted to do. I've always been very nervous about leaving my comfort zone, mm -hmm. so this is me doing it now, and I'm terrified, but we'll give it a good bash. I think you'll be amazed, you'll, I think you'll probably settle in much better than you think you're going to. I have lived down in London a couple of times when I've been working on things. I, I imagine you'll probably have a similar experience to me, which is that you'll be fine when you're there, but as soon as you get back here, you'll be like, I much prefer it here. Mm -hmm. Do you think you will miss it? It's not just the location, it's the people. Uh -huh. Like People are so kind and you do feel safe being here no matter where you are. I think the pace of life is very different in London, and I think that's something that can be hard to adjust to, because... Mm -hmm. In London, it feels like everybody's sort of gliding along the surface, going, "Ooh, culture! Ooh, restaurants!" And underneath their wee legs, are going, "Oh my God, it's really expensive! It's really expensive!" Yes. Um, and it, it, there's a sense of kind of, there's a slightly wound up, tense feeling mm -hmm. that you don't realise you have when you're there until you step foot off the plane in Scotland, and you're like, "Oh yeah, look, my heart rate's normal." Yeah, um, it's <laughs> such a sense of relief <laughs> and just kind of chill. It's weird. Yeah. So, did you always want to do acting? Was that always the plan? <laughs> so, I suppose that's two different questions. I wanted to go to drama school and I got the forms and I bottled it in uh, I didn't even fill them in, partly because I couldn't afford the fee, being really honest. Um, so, I went to uni and I did something else and left and got a job and, and was just I was in amateur theatre companies for a long long time and loved it and learned tons and tons and tons um, and, and got to do loads of things I would never have got to do otherwise and then eventually my company had to make redundancies. Oh you're joking. I got a redundancy payment and it meant I could afford to try and I sort of thought to myself right, I'm going to try for six months because I had been doing bits and bobs of work I'd managed to get my equity card by getting one line on Monica the Glam oh nice story. one four words <laughs> five syllables and that made me a real actor I had a trailer and everything it was dead beautiful um, so got my equity card got in spotlight so I was a real actor and I, I picked up bits and bobs of work from other people and then thought I'll try it for six months and that was I left my job in 2010 really uh, so I've been that's 12 years now so I've been an actor nearly as long as I worked in that company oh, now, wow. which blows my mind because I still feel like I'm brand new. I still feel like I'm just getting the hang of it. No. Yeah, so what about you? I was actually going to do what you were doing. I was going to be the actress. I was going to do the drama. That was kind of the, the known thing in my town was Grace does drama. And then I went to audition at the RSAMD and they said, sorry, you don't have enough life experience. Go and experience life. And I was fuming with them. I was like how dare you yeah. how dare you so I started thinking right, how can I how can I get on the telly how can I be in films oh I know I'll just naively make my own ones and cast myself because that's how it works so I went to the UWS a broadcast production had kind of dabbled in community radio but it was never going to be a thing because I was obviously going to make the TV shows uh -huh. and then they made you pick like a major basically like yeah. which one do you want to do and um, I just did the radio because I had experience there and I just never looked back. Never looked back. But I suppose a small bit of acting goes into the radio presenting. Oh, totally. You have to kid on that you like the music half the time. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm very good at that. Justin Bieber! <laughs> For the 10th time today. <laughs> it's, it's been an adventure, I'd say. It's very much like looking at David Woods. You think, oh, it's quite daunting to begin with, but actually, it's not too bad. Yes. So Karen, listen, it's been great having you here. Thank you for coming on my walk with me. I've had a real good time. As have I. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. It's been lovely. Thank you. Now remember, this is all for partnerships for wellbeing, so you're being encouraged to look and be careful for stowaways. I, I don't really understand the stowaways comment. Uh, it'll, it'll all happen and be revealed. Don't worry. You'll find out. Right. Okay, stop the film right there. I need to explain why Karen looks so confused. You see, Partnerships for Wellbeing has two puffins as its mascot and the producer insists that they make a cameo appearance. So what's supposed to happen here is that Karen walks away and we see the puffins have stowed away in a rucksack and on no account should they fall out. Just be very careful for stowaways, alright? 
Right, I, I don't really understand the story comment. You'll find out, alright? See you later, Karen. Okay, do. Ah well, you can't win them all. I'm Grace Nicholl and please join me next time for another episode of Those Funny Women in the Woods. Hmm, still not too sure about that title.